up, everyone? Welcome to the show. <clears throat> so, yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to be working on this, uh, just doing some ITC sessions, I think. Just trying out a couple of things, just seeing how things are working. So I guess that's what I'm going to be working on. Hope everybody's having a good week. Yeah, this thing is sounding pretty good. But um, yeah, I kind of just wanted to talk about <clears throat> also, what's up, Karen? Last weekend, I went to the Queen Mary. <clears throat> it was pretty cool. Um, God, they have the ship pretty locked down. It's it's kind of sad, actually. Um, but it was pretty. There's a lot of events going on. I wanted to do a lot more, but it was just kind of hard just because of all the noise. So, and then plus not having access to areas that we used to be able to go into, um, which kind of sucks. But anyway, um, it is what it is. So yeah, I guess um Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Just talking to some people about, you know, about the ship and stuff and was I was doing a live stream from there on uh on TikTok. That was actually pretty cool. I was trying to do a live stream on Yeah, I mean, I remember those days. It was pretty different back then, too. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I was trying to go live on on Facebook first. I could not keep a, a connection. Um, and Facebook is weird. If there's like, <clears throat> if there's any type of lag or connection issues, it just terminates the stream. Uh, the nice thing about TikTok is it will continue streaming um, no matter, you know, what the bandwidth is. And uh, so that was kind of cool. So I just kept on filming using that. Um, I tried a couple of times to use Facebook. It just would not. I had stayed connected for maybe, I don't know, 10 to 30 seconds, and then it would just stop. I mean, the only time I could continued is the only time I had a like a decent stream was when I was um, on the promenade deck or on the main dip deck walking around the ship so I know it kind of sucked for everybody but um, kind of got me you know the streaming on TikTok so and I actually if I actually like the um, the platform for live streams much better. <clears throat> Man, my voice is like jacking up again. I don't know why what it is. <clears throat> it's anytime I it seems like anytime I just go live is when my voice goes out. Um, I could talk around talk all day long. My voice is fine. It's kind of weird. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, uh, the funny thing is, is like naval ships are pretty, uh, pretty cool. Um, we went on. I've been on a couple of battleships. Um, been on a couple of aircraft carriers. I've been on Midway. I've been on the Enterprise. Um, 
there's a couple of other ships. God, I can't even remember what they were. <clears throat> but then also, when I was a government contractor, I got to go aboard um, a couple of uh, Aegis destroyers, which is really cool. <clears throat> yeah, um, I mean, it was a lot of fun going on the Queen Mary this past weekend. And uh, I wish I could have grabbed um, some of the footage from the live because there was something that we did catch on camera. Um, I don't know if you, if you saw it, Janice, but it was kind of cool. It's a pretty cool experience. And that was something that I did not know about the Queen Mary was the area that we were in um, with the bathroom being known to have activity. So that was kind of cool. <clears throat> and that's then for us to capture it and, and get the story on what people experience in that bathroom. And I got them both, um, on camera, which was really cool. But unfortunately, you know, with the live stream, I don't get a copy of it. So which kind of sucked. But yeah, I mean, the next day I was sore. I was so sore. Um, <laughs> oh, my God, it was so funny. Um, especially running into a security guard that escorted me back to my room one night when we were <laughs> drinking and ghost hunting. It was funny. Um, no, it was, I mean, and the good thing was, um, you know, my back wasn't hurting that night. I think it was just, I was I think it was a lot of just adrenaline just running around, too. I don't know how many times I went up and down stairs. What's up, Elisa? <sighs> yeah, it's kind of funny now, um, you know, that I was able to go do a TikTok live stream on how much how different it is going live on TikTok versus YouTube or Facebook. Because um, when you first start your stream, I could not believe how many viewers were watching. Um, it was quick. I mean, it was like 700 people watching. Um, I mean, yeah, it dies down um, because people... It's kind of funny watching um, different paranormal groups trying to stream on TikTok. Um, it starts off really high. And unless you're doing something um, that's really entertaining, which I know it's really hard to do on, you know, a paranormal show or, you know, ghost hunting in general, um, to try to get people to tune in and just engage it's just really tough um but i did learn some tricks i was talking to another um street live streamer that i met um it's kind of funny because i was watching this live stream on the queen mary like two nights in a row he was going live he was actually staying aboard and then i ran into him before I was getting ready to leave and then we started talking, he was actually talking to me on his live stream. Basically, <laughs> I was on his live stream. It was kind of funny. Um, and then we talk, We did talk a little bit later and he kind of he kind of knew that I was new to doing lives on TikTok. So he just kind of gave me some tips. Yeah, it's totally different. Um, and I could see why more people are doing it there than anywhere else. And actually, there's a new platform launching here. Um, the app is only available on because it's not 
they haven't launched it yet. But it's only available on iOS devices right now. And it's still in beta. But other live streamers that I normally watch are switching over to that platform. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, kind of glad that it's kind of opening up a little bit. Not being restricted just to Facebook or YouTube. Or Instagram. I mean, there's... Or TikTok. It's kind of opening up. But it's kind of sad seeing where and what's going on with the paranormal um, community in general. It's changed a lot, and it seems like it's kind of dying. I think it was just because it got oversaturated um, back in the... I think it peaked in the mid 2000s, probably 2014, maybe 2016 is probably when it peaked. Back in 2009, 2008, it was like, it was pretty popular. That's probably when it was probably at its, I would probably say that's when it was at its peak. Then it started kind of doing like ups and downs probably in the 2014 through 2018. Now it's just like nose diving. <clears throat> but anyway, but I'm still here. I'm still doing stuff. I have a lot more things that I want to do. So we'll see what happens. Kind of want to do some more live streams um, at locations. And I know some of you don't really use TikTok, but unfortunately that's the platform I'm going to probably switch over to when I'm doing locations. Um, just because it's the way that the platform works. And you can maintain a, a, a constant stream, unlike other services. Anyway, um, so that's that. But I did post, oh man, I got, somebody just sent me some information on the Queen Mary. So, um, because we're talking about, on the live stream, we're actually kind of comparing notes um, on things that we used to experience on there. And uh, this person that I was speaking with, um, she, she was sharing a bunch of other experiences that she had. And then we we're comparing notes on to when Disney used to own, own the ship. Um, and then I found out some other things about the room numbers, a whole bunch of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So I found out some more information about the room numbers that they were renumbered a couple of different times. And then she actually sent me some archives today. Um, original blueprints, um, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing. What's up, Amy? So I'll probably be sharing. You're in the hospital. What's going on? What's going on, Amy? You don't have to share it on here. So yeah, I'm going to be probably posting up some of that stuff possibly
Are you okay? Sorry, I'm just pausing for here for a minute. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, Amy. That sucks. But anyway, yeah, so... Um, I have a couple other locations that I'm going <clears> to <throat> try to get done, um, and get on to do some streams. Anyway, sorry, I'm just pausing for a minute. Yeah, I hope they figure out what's wrong, Amy. All right, so I guess what we can do is just do some box sessions or I don't know why I keep on saying that. Yeah, we'll do some ITC sessions here in a minute. What do you mean old habits die? Oh, that's all right. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> It's funny. I got to just, um, no, that's totally fine. And what, um, yeah, I'm not even sure what's going to happen. I mean, I'm trying to figure out, you know, if I do lives, it might be, sporadic um if i do do lives it might be during the day it might be at night um it's all gonna depend on where i go um what i decide to do um unless because i'm working on another show also um so we're still trying to figure out all of the logistics for that um so it, it's kind of just like all over the place um so yeah it, it's like like this weekend um i know i gotta i gotta build a box i got to repair a box 
and then um, I might go hit a couple of locations. Um, so I'm trying to figure out where um, if I do decide, so this is, I'm just trying to figure out what, and maybe this, maybe this is kind of like perfect. Maybe just having us here is trying to figure out the logistics for when I do go live, uh, what would be more beneficial to you guys when I do um, should I just do a, should I just post it on Facebook on my personal page? Should I post it up on, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just post it up on my personal page um, and on the Pair Awakening page. I might just say I'm going live on TikTok you know, at around this time. And then just be done. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what might be easier. Unless you guys are already on my TikTok, then you could just follow. And I think it does notify, it does send you a notification when somebody goes live on there. Because I follow a couple of people and it always pops up. I don't know. I'm really, I'm actually kind of, like I said, I kind of like the way that TikTok works. Um, I don't know why I didn't do this a long time ago. I was probably um, just procrastinating. I think I was just not really sure. I could have done it years ago. And maybe I should have started uh, doing that years ago. But I just never really used, I think that's what the reason why was, I just never really used TikTok. Um, then other people were trying to get me to, to move over to it, and I just never did. Um, and then plus you had to get a thousand viewers or followers to get to go on lives. But once I started concentrating doing that, I was able to hit a thousand, no problem. I should have just done it. <laughs> yeah, I know that you are, Karen. I know Janice is. Um, you know, I know, know some people are kind of hesitant, but... Yeah, but see, that's the thing, uh, Karen, is I'm trying to not go live like late at night as I did on the Queen Mary. I mean, I was going on pretty early. Um, I did keep on going live <laughs> from the Queen Mary um, at different times because I was just. I was just trying different things. I was just trying to get myself familiar with going live on, on TikTok. And then once I saw how it worked, it was pretty, pretty cool. But yeah, I'm going to try, like I said, I, I I want to see how it works out, like going there during the day. There's one location that I do want to go to. Um, I think if I do go live from there, I'm going to do it at two different times. I'll probably do it during the day because... I'm just going to say where I'm going. There's a pretty big cemetery. Um, it's an old cemetery. Um, it's fairly local to me. It'll probably take me about 45 minutes to get there. Um, but it's a really, really old cemetery. And we've gotten some amazing things <laughs> that happened there. Um 
So walking around during the day, it's it, because the the way that the cemetery is, it's really cool. Um, and it's open. Oh, this is the only cemetery that I know of here in the area that's open twenty four seven. Um, and there's a lot of Chumash that are buried there, so it's pr- kind of cool. Um, then there's another cemetery that is about the same distance. Um, and I've never been to that one. Um, but then there's a bunch of old, uh, adobes. Um, one of them that is very dear to my heart. And I've shared a lot of stories with that location, but the only day right now that they're open is on Sundays. And they're open only at a certain time. Now, they do have private or they do have tours like at night of that location. And I probably, if I I could go and pay for a tour and I've had some. And what I normally do, if I do do that, I'll just hang back. I won't even participate in the tour. I just like hang back and go do my own thing. Uh, so I might do that also. I'm just, I'm just throwing out some ideas. Now there's another, um, old hotel that was, um, a stagecoach stop. So it was a hotel and a stagecoach stop that I was thinking about going, it's a museum now. I was thinking about going there one day during the week or on a weekend uh, during the day and doing a live from there. So I do have plans on doing a bunch of stuff live um, during the day. Um, So if I do do those, it'd probably be like at two in the afternoon on a Saturday, that specific time. So that would be 5 Eastern. So yeah, I have a a few plans. The nice thing about all the places that I'm talking about doing, um, a lot of things that I have had happen was... Um, most of the paranormal experiences that I've had were all during the day at all of these locations that I'm talking about. Everywhere from seeing apparitions to hearing disembodied voices. Um, yeah, they were all during the day. The one adobe that I did have a couple of experiences, both during the day and at night, was the one that I said I wouldn't mind paying to do a tour on a Friday. Or I think he normally does them on Fridays. I'll have to check. I'll have to look at a schedule. And then I'll announce when I'm going to do the lives from there. Which I'm kind of excited about doing. So, like I said, I mean, I'm racking my brain right now. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, and that's the thing. Most people, that's what I've noticed also. Most of the people that do, like, paranormal stuff on TikTok are walking around cemeteries uh, during the day. Or they have, you know, their lights out, whatever. Um, So, yeah, we'll see. Plus, I had a couple other things I wanted to do, so. Oh, crap. What happened here?
camera freaked out. It's never happened. Yeah, and if you guys want me to do some, you know, let me know what you guys want to see or what type of content you want to see. Because I'm open to force. I'm open to suggestions. God, my voice is all screwed up. <clears throat> I don't know why. What's going on with my voice? It's so frustrating. <laughs> it's almost like I'm choked up, like I can't talk. <laughs> and it's only when I do lives. I don't know what it is. It's really strange. <sighs> it's driving me. It's, it's driving me crazy. It's like I'm really congested. I wonder if it's just this in here. Um, no, not really. It's, but it doesn't happen during the day. Like when I'm working, I'm fine. You know what it is, though? I think I know what it is. I smell cigarette smoke really bad. And that's what's bothering me. I just smelt it. That's what I'm thinking it is. But see, here's my theory, though, also. So, maybe, <laughs> here's the thing, like, I don't know if you guys saw a post that I did, um, it was somebody that did a video now, and we talked about this. Um, I think we talked about it here on the show. So is it... A lot of people have been talking about this, too. We've talked about it. I've talked about it for a while now. Now, is it because the person... There was somebody that lived here before... Um, he passed here. He was a heavy smoker. And when I first moved in this house, I used to experience him a lot. I seen him a few times. I talked to his widow and I told her what I saw. And she said that I wasn't the first, that, Somebody else told her the same thing a while back. So I would experience him. And it was kind of funny because she showed me a picture and I said, yep, that's him. That's who I see. And I said, I would kind of explain where I'd see him a lot. And she was like, yep, that's basically where he would hang out. So, and I said, okay, now. Was he a smoker? And she said, yes. He smoked cigarettes daily, cigar once in a while, but he was more of a pipe, pipe and cigarette smoker. And I said, okay. So, and I kind of described what the smell I smelled. I said, it was kind of sweet, a sweet smelling tobacco. And she said, yeah, that's what he was smoking his pipe. And then I said, yeah, and then he was smoke like cigarettes heavy. And she said, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so 
So that's what I'm getting at, Karen. So it's like, you know, is it that we're experiencing somebody in the past, you know, a spirit? Or is it that we're on the same environment, just different timelines, and he could still be smoking in his time period, and then in our time period, it kind of overlaps. It's almost like, <clears throat> and this is kind of what we're talking about also, was there's really no such thing as time. Um, because it's just like we're in a square space. We share the same space, whether it's the past, present, or future. So is it at times, and this is kind of like, and this is what I'm talking about. So there's been times when we were at a location and we would hear disembodied voices. Um, and it was funny because we got some EVPs of people telling us to get out of here. We don't belong here. And we're trespassing. And it was like, okay. And they said, you're not patients here. You need to leave. It's not visiting hours. So it's like, wait a minute. Is it that, and that's what we we start talking about it, is like, wait, so are we, they seen us as ghosts or seen us as, you know, in their time, they, they're seeing us in their space, so they're telling us to leave. And then in our time, we're seeing them as ghosts or we think it's, a, it's an apparition. And, and this is what, what I'm saying is, like, anytime I've seen an apparition, they just, liked, just like, walked right by, like, not even interacted, um, or just walked right past. I've seen the woman that used to own this house. I've seen her walk through the living room. I've seen her walk out the kitchen door, open the door, shut the door, and walk out, like, I wasn't even there. Um, other people, uh, we we're here having a barbecue, and um, my friend and my son both saw uh, a lady walk f through the living room, through the back door. She opened the door, walked through the back door, and shut it. And I, they both described this lady and I said that's the owner that used to own the house and I kind of said did she have you know blonde hair yep was it kind of short yep um and then they said she was dressed like kind of like um um oh my god I can't even think oh like Jackie Kennedy and they said yeah <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. And I because I showed them a picture of Jackie Kennedy and they said, yeah, that's the type of dress she was wearing. Um, Kind of a trip. But anyway. So, you know, so I wasn't I've had four people see that sa the same woman. Um, walk through the living room, but I saw her walk through the living room. I saw her walk through the kitchen, open up the door, walk out, and shut the door. And I thought it was my landlord coming, because she would, she comes over once in a while. And, um, and sometimes, at, at times, I, I even told her, if I'm home, you can, you know, if you need to do anything or come in, just come in. And uh, she said that. I, she, so I was on the phone, and I figured, oh, I'm on the phone. That's why she didn't say anything when she walked past me and walked out the door. So I asked her, were you here earlier? What did you need? And she said, I wasn't there. I was like, okay. So it's just kind of weird.
So yeah, Karen, see, and it's, I've talked to several people and we've all talked about this. And they were yelled at by somebody <clears throat> telling them to get off their property and they're trespassing this and that. And it was like they were, and they were, and they didn't see anybody there. They're like, there's nobody here. Who's yelling at us? And there was nobody there. And it was coming from inside the house. So it's just kind of interesting, you know, do, is it like when this happens, do people think like we're ghosts? Um, hmm. Yeah, so I mean, it's just kind of interesting. So, yeah, my theories have totally, you know, I've been trying to kind of capture more evidence of this. So a lot of things that I'm doing now is totally changed. Um, trying to just get it documented more. And I think this is why I want to hit certain locations more yeah but i mean it's that theory of time i mean that's what that was you know einstein's the one that said that So I don't know. It's just, it's kind of strange. See, now I'm just like sitting here chit-chatting. <laughs> yeah, I'm also working on... Um, no, I, I have been doing a lot more um, watching different different things. Um, I was watching some other documentaries on what were, well, not documentaries, other people talking about the same thing, what we're discussing. I might have to start sharing some of this stuff. It was like, uh, I'll have to get some tapes or some recordings. So some friends of mine did some uh, an experiment um, where they were trying to contact um, the, the Titanic. This was done, an experiment done on the Queen Mary. Um, so it was, I think it was on an anniversary of the Titanic. Um, I 
God, I'm, I'm trying to think. I know it was on an anniversary of the Titanic going down. Or disaster. Um, so they actually were doing EVP sessions. They were also doing um, like an experiment of them trying to, they're using Morse code. Um, and they were trying to contact the Titanic. And they were getting real uh, SOS messages um, or messages back from the Titanic and they were sending out a warning. Um, they synced up the time, um, everything, the date, everything. So they were sending out warning signals about the icebergs um, being in the area. And they were getting responses back. And they said, yes, I, um, that they were, icebergs were spotted that they were adjusting course and that they were going to be into port later. Um, so, you know, when all said and done, they just said, um, it seems, sounded like they contacted them um, in time for them to give them the warning and they made it and they were going to be in New York at a certain time. Um, and they thank them for giving them the warnings. So it was pretty interesting listening to the, the responses and the tapes. Um, it was pretty cool. That was done back in, I want to say 2008, 2009, somewhere around there. It was pretty cool. Yeah, they had like a Titanic club or something. And that was one of the things that they were going to do. They actually had, I think, a historian there. There's a bunch of people involved. But it was, it was a pretty cool experiment. And the results were pretty amazing. So, and this is the thing. Okay, so see, this is the other thing. Is it, and this is, this is what we're talking about. So is it that we're just in a different time period and they were still alive at that time? I don't know. It's just, it's interesting though. And then is it when we have these experiences, is it just our times are overlapping and we think because this is what we're seeing, this is what we call a ghost and we're just tapping into something that happened in the past. Um, I know that other people have said that they've done this and they actually were getting responses from the future. They're getting future dates. Um they were asking, what year is it? And they said, you know, like 2058. And they, were, they were like, wait a minute, dude, that's in the future. When they were out doing an EVP session. So, yeah, it's just kind of interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a rabbit hole that we can go down, you know, if we... Uh, I, I need to have some guests on here and talk about this. It's hard to just me just rambling and talking. Making myself look crazy. <laughs> but it's just, you know, it's, it's just diff different things that we've experienced and talking about. You know, it's, it's kind of crazy. But see, the, the thing, Karen, is that, I don't know, just things are different. Um, just trying to get people to come come on and, and talk about certain things. People think, you know, 
I don't know. I don't know if it's just times have changed. People just aren't interested. Um, I don't know. But if you watch, you know, sorry, I'm banging a screwdriver on the desk. I'm playing with the screwdriver. Sometimes I'll do that. Um, it's like a fidget, a fidget toy. <laughs> I just get fidgety when I just sit here and ramble or talk. Um, it's because I feel like I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> um. I don't know. It's just, uh, I just, I have so many like different things going through my head all the time. And sometimes I'm just like, I need to talk to somebody about, you know, some of these experiences and it's nice to share them with others. And maybe also I do it because I'm trying to get other people to open up. Because trust me, I've had a lot of weird shit happen. And I don't have the answers. I just have theories. And that's why I think, you know, a lot of things, that's why I think I talk down on so much. Is because a lot of what people think happen, it just doesn't hold the water. Um, you're talking about you know, paranormal equipment, um, different theories with the paranormal just doesn't hold water. Um, and I think a lot of the theories that have gone on have kind of, kind of dissipated. And I think a lot of people have just, you know, they have been grifters. Um, and people that have finally seen the light just are like, yeah, well, what's the nef next grifting idea? Because a lot of people feel duped, I think. I think a lot of people that were looking for answers kind of got their awakening and said, you know what? I'm done. I'm out. You know, this is a bunch of crap. And it's sad. It is sad, but, you know, that's, I think, why a lot of people stick with it and try to, they're still looking for answers. And then a lot of people are, you know, have come up with the same theory and the same, the same theories that I'm talking about. And it's so funny because so many people are talking about it. So is it, hmm. <clears throat> Is it something that people are coming to the realization and coming up with the same theory? Like, wait a minute, they're experiencing the same thing. Wait, and then they'll see the same thing happening over and over and over. And then they're like, wait a minute. In reality, no, I'm not getting any real interaction when I'm at these locations, but I'm getting this instead. And it's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, you're hearing disembodied voices, but if you listen to the voices and what are actually being said or things that you're hearing or experiencing, and you start putting in all the pieces, of, of, you start putting the pieces of the puzzle together, then you're like, wait a minute. And then you start reflecting back, wait, that happened here also. Wait, and then you start doing more and more research. Then it's like all the pieces of the puzzle come together. It's like, but then it still leaves you scratching your head. But the aha moment is when other people start saying, I've experienced the same thing. Then it's like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> so, and that's kind of where we are. It's kind of, and I, like I said, I've talked to people that were just die hard. No, it has to be this. It's got to be this. To where now they're changing their tune and saying, remember what we were talking about? And then we put our heads together. Yeah. And they said, well, this is what I'm thinking that's going on. 
it's like, wait, what? I thought you didn't, you were, you know, saying this. Well, I started experiencing this more and more. So now this is where I'm at. So, and here we are. No, exactly. And that's, but see, it's, it's not, and I'm not trying to sell anybody on the idea or anything, but it's just, it's kind of cool when you're, you've been doing this for so long and you're starting to see a pattern happen. You know, and, and it's frustrating to, it's so frustrating to where, you know, still see people doing typical ghost hunting, and it's like, don't you understand what's going on here? Or, you know, you try to talk about different things, and you're just like, you're shaking your head, or just like, oh my god, this is so ridiculous. Um, And that's the thing is, and this is why I think, you know, it's not like we're trying to, you know, dead grandma's dead. Dead grandma's gone. She's resting. Leave dead grandma alone. Um, you know, and I'm not being disrespectful, but that's what most people want to do. And it's like, you know, Dead grandma's gone. I mean, if you want to experience, you know, grandma hang out at her old house, hang out uh, where she used to be, maybe you, know, you might catch her in a different time period. Who knows? You know, like at my mom's house, there was a couple of things that happened. And... You know, we were just talking about this last Sunday uh, during dinner. I was over there having dinner, and my sister was telling me uh, that her and my mom experienced something. And, um, and then they were trying to get me to, like, explain to them what's going on. Like, okay, so this happened, you know, so they saw somebody walking down the hallway. She turned into the room, um, which used to be my room, um, and which is now my sister is staying there. So she walked in there and then the door shut and my, fr my sister was all freaked out. And then she was like, so what could have that, have, you know, what's going on? I just said... I kind of chuckled and said, that's just grandma because the, and I said, think about it. Okay. How tall was grandma? She was short. She was maybe five foot one, maybe she was probably five foot. And, um, and then I said, did she, where was she? She was go going in the, in the linen closet. And I said, okay, think about what grandma used to have in the linen closet. And then they were like, oh, my God. And I said, so basically, Grandma doesn't even know that you're here. She's not, you know, is she trying to interact with you? No. Did she just go in the linen closet? Yeah, because my grandma was an avid sewer. She was always sewing. Um, and that's what she did for a living for a long time. So she was always sewing something. And she would keep a lot of her sewing supplies on one of the shelves because the linen closet's like huge. There's two of them. Um, and she would go into the linen closet to get some um, fabric. Or she had another box that had a bunch of patterns. And she had her, her, all of her like thread um, bobbins and stuff in there. So I said, look, she, you know, where was her, all of her sewing supplies? In the linen closet. Okay, so she went in there. And then so in the back room at one point, that was her sewing room. Um, and then my mom was like, yeah, he's right. And I said, see, it was grandma. She's sewing and that's what she's doing. It's in her time period. 
And she was like, they were like, oh my God, you're so right. I was like, see, don't, there's nothing to be afraid of. of. If, if you see her, just say, hey, grandma, whatever. And just, she might say hi back. <laughs> you don't know. Or she might yell at you, like, what are you doing here? Why are you, you know, why didn't you say something? You know, who knows? Anyway, just kind of interesting. But you see what I'm saying? It's like, um, and this just happened. Um, this was really recent. So um, and they just told me about it Sunday. And she said it happened maybe a few days before that. So last week sometime, or the week before, I mean. Um, so, and th that house is so active, just like this house. This house is very active. I mean, especially with cigarette smoke. And I don't know if it's because of when I go on live um, is when... It stirs things up. That's what people think it is, is when I go live, it stirs it up. I don't know. Um, see, now this this whole live became a, a, a chat session. Uh, I didn't even go and do box sessions. Sorry, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. ITC sessions. I don't even use a box anymore. I'm, I got to stop saying that. Anyway. So, yeah, let me know um, if you guys want to. Pardon me. Let me know what you guys want to do um, in the future. I'm just trying to come up, come up with some ideas. Yeah, it's just like I said, I mean, trying to go live on tick on uh Facebook or on YouTube, it's just really hard anymore. Um I just think because of the platforms, I mean, times have changed, the platforms are changing. Um If you look at all of the paranormal, here's another tip. If you look at all of the paranormal sites um, and all the feeds <clears throat> on Facebook or on TikTok, the, the numbers have just like plummeted. There's a pretty famous Paris celebrity that was complaining about the same thing. He was saying that he's doing so much work and his numbers are just like, he still gets good numbers, but they're maybe a tenth of what they used to be. So and that's kind of what I've been noticing, and that's kind of why it's not really just dis discouraging. I just think it's the sign of where everything is. I just think that there was so many grifters that at one time, at a point in time, that took advantage of a lot of things, and people have kind of moved on. There's still people doing things, but. The numbers are nowhere near as they used to be. Yeah, no, exactly. And it has. I mean, I think we've all been tainted. I mean, I know I have. I know I got, I was a little pissy. But I, I think I was pissy because of 
you know, I just felt there's a lot of things that have that happened though too. So But I'm still, you know, trying to do my thing and trying to still educate people and trying to do some research. And that's another thing is I think I'm just way too honest. But I'll, that'll never change. I'm not going to, you know, sell out or change who I am. You know, and I, I just want to say also, I don't want you guys to think like I'm abandoning you guys by going to a different platform. The only reason why I'm doing it is because I can't, like when I'm broadcasting from home or if I'm doing something from home, I can, I know it's a controlled environment. I know I can maintain a connection, a connection. But when I'm out in the running around, I can't control me able me being able to stay maintained on a certain platform. And I've noticed that. Um, I've noticed, you know, even me trying to get on connected on Facebook just to even do a, a quick post, like I'm doing a check in or something, I'm at a location. I can't even get on to their site but i go somewhere else to a different platform and i have no problem connecting so um it's just a way that the back end works on their platform it's just dumb anyway all right well i'm going to get off of here also what i'm also working on i don't know if i should even say it I'm possibly going to be setting up a kind of like a radio station to if somebody wants to do a ghost box session on their own, they'll be able to <clears throat> log on to there and just listen and do their own box sessions. Um, so I'm trying to set that up too. kind of already have it set up. I just haven't gone live with it. No, exactly, Karen. That's exactly how it is. Um, you know, Victorian seances. <clears throat> I mean, still doing a seance today, it's kind of cool if you get the right the right people. That would be fun to do. I think if we did a seance live, it would be a lot of fun. I probably can set something up but they just wouldn't want their faces on camera. And that's the other thing. When I go live, I try not to get anybody's face in on camera. Um, so I always point the camera down. Um, or I might put it at an angle where they're not on camera. Um, even if people are walking by just because I don't want to, because I don't have the permission to get them on camera. So, um, but I don't have a problem with doing that anyway. So I don't think that would be a problem if I did say, let's set up a seance somewhere and do it live. And there's a couple of old, um, Victorian houses that we could do a seance at and we've done a seance and table tipping at a location. So huh, something might be coming down the pike. Maybe i got to, I got to make a call and pitch it. See, I'm glad that you guys brought something up. <laughs> See, I just threw somebody throws something out and then it just sparks an idea. I need to do more stuff like that. Hmm. 
Hmm. All right. Anyway, well, I got to get, I got to run. I got to make myself something to eat. I'm hungry. Um, I haven't eaten dinner yet. All right. So I will chat with you guys later. And uh, yeah, sure. Um, if I do go lives from somewhere this weekend, I will post a rough estimated time. But I'm planning on it. All right. Well, have a good night and see you guys soon.